Okay, Sunnah Rahmanir Rahim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahillahi rabbil alamin. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala sayidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi fi kulli lahzatin abada. Arni amillahi wa udhalihi. Allahumma atina min ladunka rahmah wa 'allimna min ladunka 'ilma. Subhanaka la 'ilma lana illa ma 'allamtana innaka antal 'alimul hakim. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب الشرق أدوات تعلم وتعليم وتذكر وتذكر ونفع والانتفاع والفادة والاستفادة والحث على التمسك بكتاب الله وسنة رسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم ودعاء إلى الهدى ودلالة الخير ابتغاء وجه الله ومرضاته وقربه وثوابه سبحانه وتعالى مع لطف وعافية برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إنا نسألك العلم لدني ومشرب الصافي الهاني يا وهاب يا غني اللهم إنا نسألك العلم لدني ومشرب الصافي الهاني يا وهاب يا غني اللهم إنا نسألك العلم لدني ومشرب الصافي الهاني يا وهاب يا غني اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم ألهمنا علم نفقه به أوامرك ونواهيك ورزقنا فهما نعرف به كيف نناجيك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إنا نسألك فهم النبيين وحفظ المرسلين وإلهام الملائكة المقربين في عافية يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أغننا بالعلم وزينا بالحلم وأكرمنا بالتقوى وجملنا بالعافية يا أرحم الراحمين آمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم إنا نستودعك ما قرأناه وما نقرأه في هذا المجلس وما قبله وما بعده فاحفظه علينا حتى ترده إلينا وقت احتياجنا إليه يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم يا معلم إبراهيم علمنا ويا مفهم سليمان فهمنا ويا مؤتي داود الحكمة آتنا الحكمة وأصلحنا اللهم أكرمنا بنور الفهم وأخرجنا من ظلمات الوهم وافتح لنا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا حكمتك يا أرحم الراحمين آمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم يا من قاديد الأمور كلها بيده وإليه يرجع الأمر كله يا فتاح يا عالم يا فتاح يا عالم يا فتاح يا عالم افتح علينا فتحا قريبا وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي وسدد لساني وهدي قلبي وفعل كذلك بأحبابي أبدا وارزقنا كمال فتوح العارفين والفقه في الدين مع كمال الإخلاص والصدق واليقين والعافية والغنى والنصر والحفظ والنفع والانتفاع وخيرات الدارين وعلوم الأولين والآخرين آمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين الفاتحة أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله we are continuing eh um I'll recite first إن شاء الله for the بركة of recitation إن شاء الله Okay. We finish this part about the king. 
Okay. Uh, okay. So now the king brings uh, the the woman forward. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. قال ما خطبكن إذ راوتن يوسف عن نفسه. قل نحاش لله ما علمنا عليه من سوء من سوء. قالت امرأة العزيز الآن حصحص الحق أنا راودته أنا راودته عن نفسه وإنه لمن الصادقين ذلك لي على ما أني لم أخنه بالغيب وأن الله لا يهدي كيد الخائنين وما أبرئ نفسي إن النفس لأمارة بالسوء إلا إلا ما رحم ربي إن ربي غفور الرحيم وقال الملك اتوني به استخلصه لنفسي فلما كلمه قال انك اليوم لدينا مكين امين قال اجعلني قال اجعلني على خزائن الارض إني حفيظ عليم وكذلك مكنا لي وكذلك مكنا ليوسف في الأرض لا يتبوأ منه حيث يتبوأ منها حيث يشاء نصيب برحمتنا من نشاء ولا نضيع أجر سنين ولا أجر الآخرة خير للذين آمنوا وكانوا يتقون. So the Allah Almighty Allah Azim. That brings us to the end of the scene with the uh, king. And then the next scene comes the brothers. <laughs> the brothers appear, um, and then so now the story comes to a full circle, lah. Eh? Inshallah, with the, with the end of the story, coming back to the brothers. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised Nabi Yusuf alayhi salam. Okay. Uh, Allahumma sadi ala sadina Muhammad. Alright, so we're going down to the, to now the king. He right, has done, he, 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 he goes and, uh, Allahumma sadina Muhammad, too, too far. Okay. That day we were here, right? Yeah. Oh, in the Gary Mula Day Namakir and Amina before that. Okay. Um Okay here. We finished this, right? About the woman. We went to the part about the woman, okay? Um and and when and when the king the king asked right, the the uh the the Nabi Yusuf asked the king, right, to go and um uh, investigate right about uh, what happened with the woman and we mentioned last week in depth as to the importance as to why Nabi Yusuf did that it's not always important to clear your name right? it's not actually always important to clear your name right? if, it, if there's no harm in not clearly clearing your name then leave it because on the day of judgment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like, will uh, protect you and will give you more you know, if there is no harm there's no harm but if there is a harm right, with regards to society with regards to religion even so for example, if somebody is a religious leader right, and slander is spread about that person right, and to that one, what is at stake is the religion. Uh, not so much that person himself, but the religion becomes at stake. Uh, so then there's a, there is a necessity to actually clear the name of the person. Uh, however, if nothing's at stake, uh, you can actually just let it be, uh, in a sense. <laughs> if anyone comes up to you to clarify, if you clarify, I, uh, what, what is what is what is true and what is correct? But do you go out there and 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 um, in a sense try to do something about it? The scholars they say if you want to you can, 
Uh, it's just like it's just like for example, if you want to take revenge for something, you can. Uh, it is permissible in the religion to take revenge, but only exactly as you were harmed, right? But if you don't want to, it's up to you. <laughs> it's really up to you. There's a story saying Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu, right, whereby, <coughs> right, whereby, uh, <coughs> whereby um, a man came up to Abu Bakr and uh, began to insult Sayyidina Abu Bakr. And the entire time Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was seated there and he heard, he heard the man insulting and insulting is all slander. Slander on Sayyidina Abu Bakr the entire time. And Sayyidina Abu Bakr was just silent. He didn't do anything, didn't say anything. And because we know that whenever you try to answer, right, shaitan quickly comes in right, to, 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 to kindle the fire, the flames of hatred you know, and, uh, and, and, and um, animosity. So in Abu Bakr the entire time, he was silent. You know, when the man came and uh, when, when, when the man came and, and began to uh, accuse him. So after some time, the man was, he kept going on and on and on, uh, accusing Sayyidina Abu Bakr of what is not true. So eventually Sayyidina Abu Bakr, he began to answer. He began to respond to the man and he began to um, deny all these accusations the man is making against him. And when he began to do that, Rasulullah's face changed. At first he was smiling though. He was smiling at first. And then his face changed. He got up and he walked away. And Sayyidina Abu Bakr ran after Rasulullah So he said, hadith, you must understand correctly what's going on. Eh? <laughs> and not to, you know, not to uh, take it as, as a blanket rule that you don't have to defend yourself. Because there are, there's another narration whereby you do have to defend yourself. Right, so uh, so then I'm going after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I said, Ya Rasulullah, what happened? <laughs> you saw what the man did. Right, he, was, he was slandering me in front of you and all you did was smile. And then when I began to defend with what is true, you got up and you left. And, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Well, when the man was slandering you, I saw the angels come. And they began to defend you. Right, uh, you know, in front of the men, and then when you when when you begin to defend yourselves, the angels left, and the shayateen took their place. Uh, shaitan very quickly comes in. So while you might begin the conversation, you know, or the argumentation, trying to put right what is wrong, uh, you begin doing with a good intention. Shaitan makes it very quick to go overboard. Uh, so, so instead of just saying what is right, the people you begin to retaliate because the man calls you names, you call them names. <laughs> right? The man says some things about you, right? In, in, in your defense of yourself, you might go overboard and say things about them. Uh, that's how Shaitan comes in and plays his game. Uh, he will whisper to you and say, You need to defend yourself, to defend yourself. So, yes, it's correct. We defend yourself, but then how many people can control, <laughs> control their tongue and not go overboard? You know, in saying the man calls you a liar, hey, but you lied that time. Uh, so different story come out. <laughs> you know, mashallah. Instead of saying, no, I didn't lie. I know what you're talking about. Uh, and, and most people will just go ahead and, and speak about all the other person's flaws. Uh, instead of defending themselves, they begin to uh, blame the other person. Uh, it's, it's human now. Uh, it's all human to do these kind of things. Then shaitan, he will come in and he will make you go overboard. This is what, what, what is the meaning of what Rasam said? That when you began to speak of Abu Bakr, the angels left and shaitan came in their place. And shaitan began to argue against them. And began, began, began to, to lead you in your argument. And shaitan will go overboard. Like he will push you to going overboard. One of the signs of hypocrisy is that when they argue, they go overboard. Right? That is a sign of hypocrisy, eh? And when they argue, they go overboard. And that's why the safest thing to do is to just keep the mouth shut. <laughs> just don't even get into it. Right? Because you, how, it's so difficult to, to control yourself when you're being attacked. You know, so difficult, mashallah. Right? So, uh, mashallah, you know, so this time, subhanallah, you know, it, is, it, is, it is a trait of prophets. Eh? The trait of prophets. That is this trait of hilm. Right? Hilm meaning composure. Right, people attack, 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 attack. All they do is, can you please explain that again? Right, okay, let me explain what happened. So, <laughs> right, without being, without being triggered at all. Eh? Now the the, the 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 word of the of the zaman, eh, trigger. Right, I feel so triggered, trigger. I feel so triggered. I feel so triggered. 
Like why must people You know It's not This is not sunai <laughs> To stop using that word I'm so triggered I'm so triggered No Say la hawla wa la quwata Ya bila Allahumma sari Allah sayyidina Muhammad Allahumma sari Allah sayyidina Muhammad Triggered to do selawat Go and do selawat So triggered So triggered You know I don't even know What, what does that mean <laughs> Anymore When people say that You know Subhanallah right, But um, the, the way of prophets This is the way of The high The high road <laughs> The way of The prophets InsyaAllah I saw it. Um, Allahumma sallam. This is about about defense. Um, for so for Nabi Yusuf, right? He, he Nabi Yusuf gave the sunnah of of actually defending yourself, right? And Nabi Yusuf um, gives us gives us the very clear um, reason as to when you defend yourself, right? So if you can let it slide, let it slide. If it, it's so hard, eh? <laughs> it's so hard, so hard. People say all kinds of things about you, all kinds of things about you. Subhanallah. You know, like, what, what are you gonna do? No, Subhanallah. I had, I had. There was, I mean, it happened to me that personally, my person, person, sorry, made me wake up. Eh, person, sorry. <laughs> and there was once I went, I was, you know, Subhanallah. And I hope the person who did it, I don't know who that person is. Right? Maybe they can hear this lecture and maybe they can rectify themselves. Right? But um, there was some. I um, mean, a few years ago, I went on a zoo trip. Like with my nephews and nieces, just in an accelerator, uh, small kids lah, you know, and 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 like and 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 uh, some other kids also were in that group. Went to the zoo, right? Um, bring kids around, right? and people know that I teach kindergartners in the daytime. Eh? I teach kindergartners, right? and like those who have watched me teach the kindergartners, I don't, I, I don't do anything. I've, I don't raise my voice against them. I don't. I mean, this is the tarbiyah lah, the tarbiyah that, that, that we that we learn in tarim, right? That when you when you handle uh, those who are not my yes. Right, there is um, a way. Uh, there is a way of handling them. Right, so I was at the at the zoo, right, and then we brought the kids, and then I don't even know who saw me there. <laughs> Some people saw me there, <laughs> right? Um, I don't know who it was, and then um, I came back from the zoo. To me, nothing happened. Nothing, nothing at all happened at the zoo. It was a nice trip. Brought them around. Saw the pandas. Not the zoo. I think we should be in the river safari. Got the panda. Can I saw the pandas? <laughs> I think we're in the river safari. It's a zoo. Everything is a zoo. Is this down there? Far away? Can you wrong? Are there any animals? <laughs> I think it was the river safari. Now I think back it's river safari. And then um, came back. Nothing lah. And then all of a sudden, I got a message, you know, of screenshots uh, between two people, whereby one person claimed that they saw me at the zoo. And then claim that they saw me with small children, and claim I was rough handling the small children and scolding them and pushing them and shoving them. And I was like, huh? Same person, lah. They're talking about me. <laughs> and then, yeah, Ustaz Farhana. She was there and she was saying to the kids, "Come here, you're so slow. Come here, jump, jump, jump. Watch them being so." I was like, I, hmm. <laughs> I was like, nothing of that happened. Nothing. Either the person completely made up a, a full lie, or they have some sort of psychological problem <laughs> that they imagine something happened that never happened. <laughs> I don't know what it was, right? But the person basically um, uh, screenshot the conversation saying that you know I abused, I abused the children, uh, I was abusive to the children um, there, and then sent sent to me and say is this true? You know, some of them you know uh, um, uh, kind of confronted me lah. Yeah, you 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 abused the children. <laughs> I said you know me. You know how I handle children, right? <laughs> I don't want to have anything to say. <laughs> you know, I said, no, no, of course not. Nothing. Okay, ask the kids, lah. Ask the kids yourself. They will tell you. All right, I didn't. I never say any of these words to the kids in my life. <laughs> right. So I mean, subhanallah. And then they were like, no, the person who there's a full report, no, of what I did. Like a full report from somebody who apparently saw me. <laughs> the, whole, the whole thing is start to end lie. Start to end was was a, a complete lie. And I think it's like you get so shocked. Like, how do people even do this? Yeah. Right. You wonder how do they? How do they even? Yeah. And but but even how do you even cook up <laughs> a, such an intricate lie? <laughs> I mean, you hate me so much. <laughs> what did I do? I don't know who I met. <laughs> I was like, who did I meet at the zoo? Eh? <laughs> I was like, who did I meet? I met pandas. <laughs> and, like, I don't know. I just had fun when on the 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 boat was quite boring actually, and then <laughs> see nothing. I don't know who I met. I didn't. I remember seeing any of my students. I don't remember seeing any anybody that I know. So, but somehow others. <laughs> but it's kind of thing. Should I go out and defend myself? I don't have to. 
Uh, it's, def- uh, it's defamation. It's defamation. But I mean, <laughs> I mean, if people want to believe it, can I stop them? I mean, if, basically, if, if they approach me to, to clarify with me, then good for them. Right? Good for them. If you have news about someone and you approach them to, to clarify with them, yes, I will clarify. I will clarify. But should I go up on Facebook and, and post, post out the message? Eh? <laughs> no, the person sent to people. In, in, the, in the WhatsApp. Lah. But I don't know who it is. That's the thing. I, I, don't know, I don't know who she is. I don't recognize the name. I don't know who in the world. <laughs> I have no idea who these people are. What do you do? What, what, what should I do? I have a police report. We have a police report. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, uh, for me, like, like, I was like, I don't know what to do. I mean, and, but, but this, this was, this was this, this, again, but it, it did surface it on again. People um, using that, which I already said, it's a complete lie. I mean, y'all can ask the kids, can ask the zoo for <laughs> CCTV, I mean, I mean the, the river safari for CCTV if you want. I mean, I mean if you really want to, you can ask for CCTV and they have CCTV everywhere. Go and check. I mean, I mean, I have nothing to hide. <laughs> I didn't do anything. All I know is I went around uh, bringing the keys, went on the boat, and then and went on the boat, went home. <laughs> that was all I remember uh, doing. I don't think I did. And, and, and basically, there were people there who were also witnesses. Uh, there, were, there were other adults around. And I wasn't the only one. Nah. I mean, my, 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 my siblings were there, my in laws were there, and everything. I wasn't the only one. So when they all saw the message, they were like, they're talking about the correct person. Eh? <laughs> hey, but what's my name? What's my name right there? Yeah, nah. But I don't even, even know, like, how, how do you even. Because you see, if you put it up online, it can turn very ugly. You know, it can turn very ugly. Right? And then and when people have an agenda, they will use it for their agenda. Some or other, right? So sometimes these kind of things can just ignore it, lah. Inshallah, you will Allah will Allah will put out the fire and put out the flame, and maybe and then may Allah may Allah guide that person, because whoever it was, for them to be forgiven, eh, they must ask my forgiveness. <laughs> but I never know who they were, you know. I mean, you you go around spreading slander, again you actually have to go to the person and ask for their for their forgiveness, especially if the slander was made known. Uh, if the slander was made known. Then you need to go and uh, seek forgiveness. Uh, if the sender was not made known, uh, then um, you can. There are other ways, lah, uh, of seeking forgiveness from the person. What I mean by made known is that the person you slander against, they know about the slander. Uh, they know about the slander. Then you need to go and for, uh, seek their forgiveness for it. Right? Um, what, what I mean by not made known is that they don't know about the slander, and letting them know about the slander will cause even more harm. <laughs> right? So, but what you need to do is, 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 is someone slanders, right? In their Taubai, they need to go to the people they spoke to about the slander and tell these people it was a slander. And they are liars. So hard, eh? Well, if you could lie in the first place, you can say you're a liar. <laughs> can. I mean, face the music, ah. Can. <laughs> so hard, right? You need to actually, if someone slandered in public, they must say in public, I'm a liar. Uh, in public. Now, what are the keys, eh? No. <laughs> So when it harms, um, so basically when, when, when there is something at stake, there's something at stake. So for Nabi Yusuf, being in position, uh, that will be at stake if people were to think that he is um, he's untrustworthy. Mm, he's, he's, he betrayed his, you know, his majikan. <laughs> he, I don't know what to call it. He's, he betrayed his, his aziz. Uh, that's one thing. Um, religion, same thing. Like, so if someone carries the name of the religion, Right, same thing also. Someone carries the name of the government. They carry the name of the police force. They carry the name because they're all names to be carried. Uh, so it's on your shoulder, kind of. It's on your shoulder. Right, so you need to clarify. I right, clarify that that so if someone says the head of the police force, you know, did this and this is all slander, right? Uh, so of course in Islam, Islam actually, in Islam, accusations must be proven. In Islam, so Islam it goes on innocent until proven guilty. That is Islam. Right, so accusi- if you want to begin accusations, accusation, bring your proof. Uh, so if anyone comes up to the court and say and makes an accusation, the court will not listen to anything whatsoever. Like at all, bring your proof. Right, there's the story of Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, uh, who um, his shield was stolen by a Jew. 
you know. So as he was walking along the road, he saw this Jew having his shield. And he said, you stole my shield. And the Jew said, no, it's my shield. Right? <laughs> it's my shield. And I said, no, I know, I know my shield. It's my shield. And the Jew said, no, this is my shield. It looks like your shield. But it's not your shield. It's my shield. So Sayyidina Ali brings the Jew to the, to the Qadi, to the, to the judge. And the judge, you know, um, knows Sayyidina Ali. <laughs> no, and the judge is very fair. And the know Sayyidina Ali is not a liar. He's not a liar, but proof, must have proof. So the one who's accusing is Sayyidina Ali. He's accusing the man of stealing his shield because the original situation is the man is holding the shield. Therefore, it belongs to the man. Uh, that is Islam, eh? Because just by him holding it, it's his. Until you can prove it's not his. Uh, you got to prove, eh? See, you're going to make an accusation, you got to prove. So the, the judge asked Sayyidina Ali, you know, do you have any proof that this is your shield? Then he says, yes, I, there are people who can testify that it's my shield. And then the judge said, you have to bring two witnesses. And then Sayyidina Ali said, yes, I have two witnesses, my son, al Hassan, and um, my freed slave. And then the, they, they both know this is my shield. And then the judge said, you know, we don't take witnesses from sons. <laughs> Even if your son is al Hassan, who will never lie, he's your son. We don't take witnesses from family members. <laughs> it is fair, fair. Right, so Sayyidina Ali was like, yeah, he knows the law. <laughs> he knows the hukum. He cannot take witness from, from sin. So he said, I have no one else. He said, the only people who know my shield. And then the, then the judge said, then, then I have nothing else to do. I know you're telling the truth, but I can't do anything. You've got to prove he stole it. You can't prove it. So therefore, I can't do anything to you. Or for, for I can't do anything for you. That's it. I know you're telling the truth, but I can't do anything about it. And just by that, the Jew was so moved by the justice of Islam that the Jew... Uh, converted into Islam, went into Islam and said, it is, yes, it's his shield, I stole it. <laughs> no, inshallah. It's just, I mean, but it's, it's, it's what Islam is. Like, you want to make an accusation? Bring your proof. You can't just go around making accusations. Like, you gotta make, you got to bring your, you bring your proof. Eh? Inshallah. So anyway, um, so the king, you know, so the same, with Nabi Yusuf, had complete corruption in the system. And just because the ministers are so afraid of their wives going crazy with Nabi Yusuf, they just throw Nabi Yusuf into the, into the jail. This is all the, 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 corrupt, uh, the corrupt leaders of society, eh? which have been started up until today. They're not happy with anybody throwing jail. They're not throwing jail, throwing jail. <laughs> until today, human beings from Nabi Yusuf time in our time, same story. <laughs> same story, mashallah. Right, so they said, and what happened when you ask an evil act of Yusuf? They answered, Allah is blameless. Hasha lillah. And we don't know any evil of him. So the, the, the wife of the, of the Aziz, now the truth is out. I am the one who asked him of an evil act and he is surely truthful. Right, so here um, we went through last weekend. This one. Okay, so then now, okay, Nabi Yusuf speaks. Nabi Zalika liya'lama. Liya'lama so that he would know. And he my Aziz. Like my, my, so that he, meaning... That my um, that the the, the Aziz lah, you know my 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 former boss, I guess <laughs> the former boss. We know that I did not betray him. Ani lam akhunhu bil ghayb wa an Allah la yahdi kaid al khaleen. And this is Abu Yusuf. He points to his taqwa. Right, so he did not betray the Aziz. In the unseen, and then now he highlights, and I'm not doing this because guidance cannot come to those who are betrayers. Now, if you are, if you perform khiana, the same way is in Malay language, khiana. Now, if you perform the, if you betray, guidance will not come to you. And same thing with with with, with all kinds of you know uh, really 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 vile sins. Now, betrayal is a terrible sin. Eh? Betrayal. Right, because betrayal is someone trusted you, right? And then it's like it's, it's basically backstabbing. And you go behind their back and you destroy them from behind. Right, that is the trait of the hypocrite of the shaitan. Right, so betrayal is is of like the, the, the worst of the worst. Right, they're in the depths of the hellfire. The those who betray. Which is why in 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 every government, right, they will have severe consequences for those who betray the government. Like severe consequences. I know that in, in ancient, not ancient, in medieval uh, times, they would tie the traitor um, at the London uh, River, right before the other time ago. And then, and then the, the, when the tide comes in, they were drowned. 
I had to show everybody betrayal. I said they, they used to parade um, the torture on those who uh, betray the government. I had to, to be a warning. Uh, because why? Betrayal is serious. Right? It's, it's a serious matter, a serious affair. In the rest of some time, it happened during the Battle of the Trench. The Jews betrayed. Right? The Jews in the, in the Battle of the Trench, they were supposed to be the Muslims, and then they made a pact with the disbelievers. And they were going to allow the disbelievers to enter through their fortresses to invade Medina. That is detrimental. If the disbelievers entered the fortresses, it would, it would be a massacre in Medina, in the night, killing the women and children in Medina. So their betrayal was severe. <laughs> you know, subhanAllah, severe. That's why when you learn Sira properly you know, in this way, then you learn in this story of, of the Khandaq, the Battle of the Trench, that when, when basically the Muslims won at this battle, that the, uh, the Jews, they were, um, they were, they were killed off. Uh, they were given the capital punishment. Why? Because they committed a terrible crime by betraying in a time of war. That one is really, <laughs> it's really like the worst form of crime, of, of crime to betray in time of war. And which is why, like, if you were to read, when I was younger, like, I used to read all these um, books on the Sira thing, and I was reading this book um, about on the Sira, um, written by a non-Muslim. Yeah, and then they used this, this um, situation at Handak, at, at the Battle of the Trench, right, to say how you know, it, uh, cruel so called the Prophet of some is by killing off the entire uh, Jewish people. Right, but and I was thinking, really? But so in my head, because at the time I was very young, I was like, Allah reject. <laughs> I said, confirm not true, confirm not true. <laughs> I said, later on, I learned that it did happen, but you learned the reason why, uh, why it happened. Right, because they were all set to have the Muslims all killed off because they betrayed them in a time of war. Right, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never guide those who betray because betray is the um, extreme end of lying. And the extreme end of lying, as in the hadith, Rasulullah said that a believer cannot be a liar. A believer cannot be a liar. I came a man said, Ya Rasulullah, can a believer, can a believer be a thief? Say, possible. Can a believer perform a commit zina? Possible. Can a believer drink alcohol? It's possible. They're all sins, but it's possible. Can a believer be a liar? Not possible. <laughs> Subhanallah. <laughs> How many people are liars? Eh? So here, um, the Prophet so here, the, uh, the Right, so here, um, there are actually two opinions that this could be the speech of Yus Nabi Yusuf mm-hmm. or it could be the speech of the Aziz's wife because she was just speaking. Eh? She was just speaking in the previous verse. Right, so it, 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 there is one opinion that says that it was her continuing the speech because of what is going to be said later on. Right, but the other opinion says no, it's Nabi Yusuf, Nabi Yusuf talking. Right, so the surah implies a different uh, uh, motive. So it suggests she was keen to win the respect of a man who is full of faith and who paid no attention to her physical beauty. Right, so she now wanted that he respect her for her faith and honesty in giving a true account of his personality in his absence. Right, so, um, so what it means by... It is also the obvious opinion is obvious. Lah. Right, so it seems very much like Nabi Yusuf said this. Right, that is because I want to, you to know that I didn't, I didn't betray my, my Aziz you know, in his absence. The other not so popular opinion is that it was Zulaikha who was speaking. The thing about the Quran is that very, very often the Quran is not said who's speaking. <laughs> right, so you go into tafsir to know who's speaking. Right, so from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sahaba, and also from the um, grammar of the speech. And the storyline, right? So, so that's just why some parts it can bring you to a point whereby there's a difference of opinion. It's a who's speaking here? Because it's a who said and who said, and uh, it was not said. Eh? Who said and who said? So, if the Aziz is speaking here, right? Um, it is. So, if the Aziz's wife is speaking here, it is her trying to impress Nabi Yusuf. Still, she's still trying to win his heart. <laughs> huh? Not giving up. Eh? <laughs> she said, I mean, there are, there are narrations, but Allah alam, you know, whether they are from Islamic narrations or from the Jewish narrations of her eventually marrying Nabi Yusuf. 
there are narrations right but um allahu a'lam if these are from the muslim narrative or from the jewish narrative right because a lot of times the muslims actually take from the jewish narrative right so allahu a'lam right? whether it was that she did marry Nabi yusuf or she did not right but but what is known is that she never got over Nabi yusuf <laughs> then what happened <laughs> she, She married him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there, there's, there's, there's one narrative. There's one narrative. <laughs> there's another narrative that says that she didn't marry him. But she, there's, there are two narratives. There are two narratives about what happened with her. <laughs> because like you see, so many like cut cut weddings and all like the love of Yusuf and Zulaikha. You know, we ever see before? I never see. I will never see some cut wedding cuts like may Allah please between the husband and wife, the love between. Uh, Yusuf and Zulaikha between Nabi Muhammad and Nabi Sayyidah Khadija and Sayyidah Ali and Sayyidah Fatima. So then you say Zulaikha is there. I saw so many wedding cards, you have that. And I always wonder, what did he marry? <laughs> <laughs> when you look at the tafsir, there is a, actually a, a difference of opinion. Narrative, uh, two narratives. Uh, so, so one, which is why I need to go deep in the tafsir to know if it was Israelite. Right, there is some of the Muslim tafsirs bring in um, opinions from the Jewish narrative. Unfortunately, lah. <laughs> right. So if you don't read, know, you might be reading Muslim tafsirs that bring in Jewish narratives. I mean, why must they do that? Lah? Why must they do that? <laughs> Just leave it out, lah. Why, why must bring? Because not enough information on the Islamic side. Uh, so they want to just get. In, I mean, human beings are kipu, okay? <laughs> like I mean, like we want to know. Do you get married? <laughs> like I mean, macam macam drama. Eh? <laughs> like, did they get married? But Allah didn't mention anything about this at all. Which is basically none of your business. <laughs> but we all macam want to know, right? Did you get married? Did you get married? <laughs> it doesn't benefit us at all. You know, whether they got married or not. <laughs> But we want to know, right? We just want to know. It's like a drama, lah. There's drama going on. But but there is there are two narratives. There are two narratives about it, eh? So, but it is um in the in the in the the tafsir that she never got over Nabi Yusuf alayhi salam. So to the end of her life, she yeah, she basically split from the Aziz. She split eh, from her husband, um, and she just lived her life as a. Like, 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 like just a miserable <laughs> woman, Kasiana. <laughs> uh, she, she, she was, she was so infatuated. She couldn't, she couldn't, <laughs> she couldn't be married to another person. That's why, like Kasiana, and then her name went around town. And everybody knows about it. <laughs> so kind of like you know, your heart so go out to her, like Kasiana. She. <laughs> And, and it's much to prove to everybody. You see, lah, he's so handsome. Yeah. <laughs> you are, you also got a hand. <laughs> she had to prove to everybody, eh? Yeah. I'm not to blame, okay? <laughs> it's so difficult living with him. He's so handsome. <laughs> mashallah, mashallah. Human, lah. You know, it's just human, human behavior, mashallah. So maybe we all as women, lah. Eh? We okay, say, <laughs> yeah, that the woman hide out for the other woman who is completely infatuated <laughs> with a man. <laughs> Mashallah. So basically, it was her trying to win Nabi Yusuf over eh? her last attempt, right? He was, she was beautiful. She was, she was, she was a beautiful woman. Um, even, even though she was much older than Nabi Yusuf, I remember Nabi Yusuf came to the house of the Aziz. He was a young boy. She was already a woman. Uh, so he grew up into a young man. Possible. <laughs> Older women. Yeah, yeah, so I tell the men now, eh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the Khadija was fifteen, okay? <laughs> she was fifteen. Her husband was born. <laughs> Can I imagine? <laughs> Yeah, inshallah. Allah Allah, mashallah. But it's really mashallah lad. Um, but interestingly enough, like the the 
her story lah. Her yeah. story is very interesting. Kesian dia, Masya Allah. Right, so now she, she's trying to win him over by, by being religious. <laughs> she's trying to be religious. She's trying to show she's so, you know, have got, she got Iman. <laughs> right, some people, how people try to win other people over, right? They show their religiosity. I saw orang baik. I saw, you know, Masya Allah. I'm a good person. <laughs> وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَهْدِ كَيْدَ الْخَائِنِينَ right? And then um, reference to Allah is made right? to try and win Nabi Yusuf over. Okay. Um, uh, so here is, here is where comes the proof or why the scholars say that it's Zulaikha speaking. It's because of this ayat. Okay, that's why they say that the entire thing was her speech from... From before that, not from here, from before that, right? So when, 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 when Allah says, because it was the last person that was spoken about, right? So here, so the Quran said clearly, the Quran said clearly, وَقَالَ تِمْرَأَةُ Aziz. See that? Uh, so the Quran brought her in. Her, word, her name or her title is brought in. أَنَا الْآنَ حَسْحَسَ الْحَقِّ Ana rawatuhu an nafsi wa innahu la min as-sadiqin. So we're still on her speech. Then the next ayat came about. Zalika. Right? So that's, that's the, the, the proof as to why they say it's still her talking. Because the previous ayat said the, the, the wife of the Aziz spoke up. And there was no break in the ayats. Uh, so there was, in a sense, the scholars who, pro- who argue, they say that there is no proof that it's Nabi Yusuf speaking. But we have proof that it's Zulaikha speaking. Because the very last person who was quoted is Zulaikha. And that's why they, 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 they went that way. So you see how, how they, they think so much. Eh? We all look at the meaning, uh, I think Nabi Yusuf talking. <laughs> it's a siwe, it's a siwe. <laughs> Mashallah. Mashallah. But, but this, the, the next ayat pushes it further that it is her who's speaking right here. وَمَا أُبَرِّئُ نَفْسِي إِنَّ النَّفْسَ لَأَمَّارَةٌ بِسُوءِ إِلَّا مَا رَحِمَ رَبِّي So this ayat says, and I'm not, I'm not freeing myself. Hmm. I'm not trying to free myself of blame. So it's called to say, how could this be Nabi Yusuf? Uh, how could this be Nabi Yusuf speaking? Because, and, and see, because it's a word there, so it's, it's a continuous speech. Uh, someone speaking... <laughs> Uh, so there's one opinion that says Nabi Yusuf is speaking, the other one says Nabi Zulaikha is speaking, and we're going to see also how they, they argue that it's Nabi Yusuf speaking. Basically, it's, it's ambiguous, right? Who's speaking? But maybe now he's like, no, actually, I think now it's Zulaikha speaking. <laughs> now it's, the, 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 the argument for Zulaikha is stronger now, <laughs> inshallah. Uh, so, Wama ubarri'u nafsi. I'm not freeing myself. You know, I'm not freeing myself from blame. Inna nafsa al-ammaratun bisu. And the self commands to evil illa ma rahima rabbi except what my lord has mercy on right, so those who say it's Nabi Yusuf speaking right, they say that Nabi Yusuf from his humility uh, from his humility he's not trying to point fingers uh, he's not, he's, and he, did, he did not, he did not you know, um, say that he's completely sinless but it's from the, it's from the humility of Nabi Yusuf yes he is sinless he's a prophet <laughs> right? but his humility uh, in, in, in him doing that right? So that the, 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 the self commands to evil Except for what Allah has mercy on And Allah had mercy on me By protecting me right, From this woman Had it not been for Allah's mercy I would have fallen into, into, this, into this trap of lust As well myself uh, That is, the, that is the, the, the humility of a, of a prophet right? like, like someone said you know, If you speak to somebody else And they had done, done, a, done, a, done a, a crime or a sin That you would have never done but you'd be like, you know, I know it's very hard. I can't imagine myself also, you know, that, you know uh, resisting that sin that you fell into. But actually, you would never do it. Lah. <laughs> but you say it in a sense, like, just to, you know, um, say that you know, anyone could have fallen into it. You know, anyone could have, you know, but, but Allah stopped me from this. That kind of thing. Right? It's, it's all under humility. Lah. In understanding that Allah is the one who protects. Inna Rabbi ghafoorur rahim. I don't absolve myself of guilt. So they say it's not Zulaikha speaking. Right. Lo, the human soul uh, c- commands to evil, except whereon my Rabb has mercy. Oh, in my Lord is forgiving and merciful. So now still on her, right? So, so now it is easier now to explain that it's her talking. 
And she was repentive and yet did not deny that she sinned. She reflected on the reality of hum the human being, the one whose self is always inclined to evil. If not for the mercy of her Lord, she have succumbed to her own self. She knows that Allah is always forgiving and is merciful. And she's still, she's still trying to somehow or other impress Nabi Yusuf. Alayhi salam. You know, subhanallah. The only way to get out of this thing that she's in there <laughs> is to focus on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She needs to stop looking at the object of her, of her passion and her love and look to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There was a, um, a slave in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Very, very sweet story, la, mashallah. Um, a slave man. I married to a slave woman in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this slave woman belonged to somebody else. And then one day, her, the slave woman's um, owner freed her. And she's not she's a free woman. So as a free woman, she does not want to be married to a slave. Right? So she basically got her... She basically, she can choose to be divorced. Because her husband's a slave, she can choose to be this divorced from her slave husband. The husband is head over heels for her. Loved her so much. Right, that loved her so 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 much. So it was it's a story of the time. So she split herself from him, couldn't send him. She couldn't send him, but she split herself from him. And then that like, he the, the whole of Medina would see him following her. Depunya Depunya <laughs> His love for her was to that extent, eh? She would he would follow her around and beg her, take him back and beg her and beg her and beg her. Like really on and that kind of extent. To the point that this happened in front of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and they seem be seeing going on for quite some time. And the people of Medina are saying, "The the guy, the the husband." So, so it was sometimes to the woman, you know, that the, the same girl who was freed, right? And she's freed. He said to her, "Why don't you marry him? He loves you so much, and you're not married anyway. Just marry him. Like you were once married to him. A nice person. It's a nice Muslim. Marry him. He loves you so much." Then the woman said, "Ya Rasulullah." Is that a command or are you just appealing on his behalf? Because she has to know, right? If it's a command, must obey. <laughs> so he said, rather, I'm just appealing. In, in the ashra, I'm, I'm just trying to intercede on his behalf. I'm not commanding you. I'm just interceding on, on his behalf. Then she said, Ya Rasulullah, I have no need for him. So harsh. He was right there. He was right there. So hard on him. So I have no need for him, Ya Rasulullah. When she said that, that man, like there was a switch that clicked in his head. That she just rejected the appeal of the Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who's appealing here? The Prophet. He is appealing with you. you know, he's trying to intercede with you for the sake of a man, even if you don't like him, for the sake of the one who interceded, accept it. Again. So the man, and when, they, when, when, she, when he heard what she said to the Prophet Wasallam, there was a click in his head and he had no interest in her whatsoever. Just clicked. He had no interest in her whatsoever. Now she is head over heels for him. <laughs> true story. This is all hadith. This is all hadith. It's true story. <laughs> the hadith collection is actually very interesting. <laughs> you read, read, read. Mashallah. Bahaya, sorry. <laughs> so now Allah, <laughs> Allah tested her now. Now she's head over heels for him. And he has no need for her. Already. He said, I'm not, I'm not interested in someone who does not take the intercession of the Prophet. So he goes, I am, I'm free of her. And now he went on his way and he has no interest in being married to her whatsoever. No, inshallah. He says, inshallah. <laughs> but that's what it is. It's what it is that you see, if you see someone, you know, um, I'm basically focused. <laughs> focus on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I focus on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If someone's so hit over heels about somebody else, are they, you know, <laughs> like, like your whole life is consumed by a human being. Is it even worth it? No, no, subhanallah, it's not worth it. Not at all. Eh? <laughs> at all. Even if you're married to that person, you can't consume yourself for a person. It's a human being. I mean, your whole life, you know, in the salati wa nusuki wa mahiyaya wa mati lillahi rabbil alamin. Every day say that kind of things. And for our prayer, right? you know, for sure in my prayer and my striving and my life and my death, 
for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. This is strength. If you if you're able to to have people people around you, yes, you love them, yes. But you and Allah. Don't peg your sanity. <laughs> Don't peg your emotions on a human being. Human beings are volatile. <laughs> like they come, they go, they die. <laughs> human beings die. You peg your stability on the unstable. You are unstable. Can yeah. okay, so The Quran. The Quran very, very firm. The Quran. You want stability? Peg yourself to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. You get stability. Inshallah. And strength. You know, beyond measure. Your strength, because because Allah is beyond measure. Subhanahu wa taala. Alhamdulillah. Right. So lessons from Zulaiha. I right? still trying to to win over Nabi Yusuf. Stop it. Just stop it. Just 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 focus on Allah Subhanahu wa taala. Amazing the Quran. Eh? The, the, the Quran, the Quran, the mentality the Quran builds is so profound. The Quran, the, really, someone who studies the Quran properly, you will you will live your life with so much clarity. It's beyond, you know, it, it, it blows your mind. The Quran, Subhanallah. It's a, but that's the thing: study the Quran. And the Quran is recited, yes, but it's also meant to study, to be studied. Allah from the beginning of the Quran said it is hudan lil muttaqin. It's supposed to be a guidance for life. It's a book of life, eh, Quran. <laughs> it's a book of life. If you don't study the Quran, you're missing out a lot on all these uh, life facts and life hacks also <laughs> in the Quran. <laughs> Subhanallah, eh? Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Said so, uh, Allah says in Surah Yusuf, the beginning in the, in the story of Nabi Yusuf, a question, uh, 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 signs. For those who ask questions <laughs> about life, look at this. Inshallah, we should understand like, how the uh, an ancient story <laughs> in our time. How many people need to hear what is what is being taught by our Creator? Our Creator is teaching us all these things. Subhanahu wa taala. Waqala al maliku. Okay, so now the discussion is, has ended. Is Zulaikha, right? Has ended with the woman. And everything. The king is convinced. The king now says second time round, bring him to me. Astakhlis huli nafsi. I will. I have made him special for me. <laughs> Chosen him for me. I hear because the king has identified right, that it is um, that Nabi Yusuf has a spe- has a, has a very special trait. Uh, so when you find someone with this kind of trait, the king was so wise. Straight away, his mind, okay, he stands next to me. This person has has, has some talent. <laughs> I need his talent. You know, kalamahu when he talked to him. So now the king brings Nabi so close to him. Gets to know Nabi Yusuf. Of course, the king straight away amazed by Nabi Yusuf, alayhi salam. Cause prophet. Uh, anyone who speaks to prophets, they're amazed by prophets. Eh? They're amazed by prophets. You know, even Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, even his own enemy Abu Jahal. You know, Abu Jahal narrations are the, the riwayat in Abu Jahal. In front of other people, he will be this crazy, you know, man and and, and, and curse and, and slander and shout and whatever. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But when he's one on one with Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam alone, he bends his head. You know, and he speaks to Rasulullah in a, with a lot of respect. <laughs> it's all a show, right, because of his ego or whatsoever. But when he's alone, like he was, he was seen doing that. Abu Jahl, eh? Abu Jahl was seen like 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 like, like, a, like a very obedient puppy eh? <laughs> in front of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then someone actually saw him doing that. When he, and then when he walked away, the person went after him and said, "Abu Jahl, I just saw you like humble yourself in front of Muhammad. What's going on?" And he said, "He's a prophet." <laughs> That's it. He's a prophet. I, I I can't help but lower myself. I can't control myself but lower myself. Subhanallah. They know it. They know it. So the kings, the kings are like that. Right? They, they they meet the prophets and they get off the throne. And right? they stand in front of the prophets with their head bowed because of the majesty that Allah has clothed His prophets with. They wear the simplest clothes, prophets, right? but they walk around with majesty. You know, there's a light that comes from them. Can you imagine now? You want to live in time of prophets. 
Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Masha'Allah, if he's do see him, Alhamdulillah, if you all get to see him, Masha'Allah, in your dream or in a waking state, eh, hey, Masha'Allah, it'll be a, it'll be a, you know, like literally a dream come true, eh, <laughs> to see Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But, uh, Masha'Allah, I cannot imagine how people last time they actually meet prophets, eh. You're a prophet, Masha'Allah. <laughs> Inshallah, but the king, you know, uh, he brought Nabi Yusuf close to him, um, and he spoke to Nabi Yusuf, and he was impressed by Nabi Yusuf, and he said, "Qala inna kal yawma ladaina makinun amin." You are a person of position, right, with me. You have you have a place with me, O oh Yusuf, and you are trusted, O oh Yusuf, amin. I right, say so position, and you have trust. Right, two things that matter to people. Right, Nabi Yusuf didn't even, didn't even blink. <laughs> I mean, someone says to you, you know, you have a place with me. I trust you. It means a lot. It is when, when someone who's a stranger or someone of position says that to you. It means you really earned something, something uh, precious. Nabi Yusuf didn't even blink. Not even concerned. <laughs> All he was concerned about was... Please me over the treasures because an amana going on. <laughs> hey, we say get to work lah. Get to work. Now put me over the treasures. I will guard over it. I don't put anybody else. He has only one one thing in his mind, right? That he knows for a fact that seven years of drought is going to come about, and there's no time to waste. We can't afford to waste to have any any food um, unaccounted for. Okay, so that be so strict. The the the, the 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 mindset, eh, mashallah. Just get to work, do what you have to do, right? Um, all these praises and everything on <laughs> they're there, lah. Doesn't matter to Nabi Yusuf alayhi salam. Right, so Nabi Yusuf was in prison. The prison has been de- uh, depicted as the grave for the living, right? the ha- the house of grief and sorrow, the place of trials for the friends and the blow upon the faces of the foes. As the king realized that Nabi Yusuf was reliable and sincere and found no treachery ascribable to him, he took him into his confidence. He especially chose Nabi Yusuf to be close to him. It was said that there was nobody else who got this, um, who got this, this uh, title right, with the king. And Nabi Yusuf having come out of, because in that time they called the, grave, they, they called the, 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 the prison in this way. Uh, the grave for the living, <laughs> the house of grief and sorrow. But Nabi Yusuf actually transformed the prison. Eh? Nabi Yusuf being in the prison, he, trans- he, he maintained his, his dignity while he was there. And it's, 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 that's what it is. People of honor and dignity, they have honor and dignity no matter where they go. No matter where they go. They have honor and dignity. Right? Um, there was once I went to, for, for, I went for uh, Umrah. You know, and the house where Sayyidah Khadija's house was, right, they have already, um, they, they, they basically, they, they, they took it down, they destroyed it, and they built toilets over the house where Sayyidah Khadija. Right, I mean, it's a secret place. It's where Sayyidah Fatima was born, a lot of wahyu came there. The first place where he ran, you know, uh, to go to his wife, to be comforted. It's, it's basically, I mean, subhanAllah, and as Shaykh Allah Yusuf will say, that if this was in a non-Muslim land, they would honor and preserve the relics, you know, of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I mean, I mean, it matters to us, right, where he lived and how he lived and everything. It, it, it's still recent history, eh? The house in the Khadija uh, has been preserved till recent history because they have pictures of it. They actually have pictures. So till the point cameras came out, <laughs> right, they actually took pictures of the, of the entire ground, of the house of Sayyidah Khadija, where Rasul Sam lived. Now they have turned it into a public toilet. You know, Allah alam why, like why they were doing that. Like, but when I went, when I went there for for Umrah, like, the guide who brought us around, he says, he says something that was very, um, very. Uh, I felt very, very prominent. You know, mashallah, very, 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 very um, profound. Like he brought us to the so there's this there's, there's this library that's still, that's still there. The library is the place of birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Right, so you can actually go there and but you can't go in lah. They, they 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 have their issues lah. <laughs> so you can't go in anywhere, you can, you can sit outside and they'll chase you away. <laughs> but you can sit there lah and you can you can send you can basically um you know, rec- recollect right, all of the, the sira and everything. So you go down a bit a bit down and you come to these public toilets, right? And that is where Sayyidina Khadija's house was. It's just it is basically is there's nothing else? 
I said one public toilet right in the right smack at the place where her house was, as if intended to build it there. There was nothing else there, and there was no need for a toilet there because no one goes there. It's really kabla kang, really behind the entire mosque. No one goes there, and they build a toilet there. Right, so we actually went to visit the site. We didn't go to the toilet, but we went to visit the site um, of of the house of Rasulullah Sallallahu with his beloved wife, Sayyidah Khadija. I mean, if you go to London, you find all the, the palaces all still preserved of King Don't Know Who from King Don't Know Who. And it's all there, can If you go to anywhere in medieval England, they're preserving all these things. And then the Muslims, what's going on? Eh? Uh, but anyway, I was there and, and then the, the, guy, the, the man was like, I, uh, he, spoke, he spoke in Malay. Lah. He said, this is a noble place, Tempat Mulia. Right? And he said, Tempat Mulia, Tidak boleh, um, I can't say Muslim Malay, lah, but he said, but the, <laughs> lah, for the Malay. But he said in Malay, lah, he said, something that is mulia, something that is, that is noble, nobody can strip the nobility. They can build whatever they want to build here. They can never strip the nobility of this place. We will visit it. Even if they build a toilet over it, we will still visit it. <laughs> and that is profound. I mean, a person who has nobility, a place that is, that is, that is noble. Right, uh, whatever Allah has raised, nobody can bring down. They can do whatever they want to do to it. No one can bring it down. Right? Allah has, has chosen that part of the of, of, of the earth to be the place where the Prophet ﷺ spent most of his days in Mecca there. And even when he came back to conquer Mecca, years later, you know where he spent his nights? In the house of Khadija. I mean, romantic kind. <laughs> you think about romantic, right? When you come all years after her death, married already nine more, nine more, nine more women. No, almost ten, ten more women. He married already. But he came back to Mecca, a conqueror. Where does he spend his nights? In the house of his wife. <laughs> Mashallah, that's sweet, that's sweet. <laughs> In the house of his wife, he spent his nights. He himself had, you know, um, a love and reverence for that place. Because so many memories. You know, of him and his wife there, and his children, his six children that were all, were all born in that same place. So they found them at the Zahara. Every, so many things happen in the house. You know, SubhanAllah. That they have pictures of it. Makes your heart like, you know, just preserve it. Come on. <laughs> Let us go and see the house of Rasulullah Islam, mashallah. But these are things whereby Allah knows, lah. Eh? That way Allah has, allowed, Allah has allowed for it to be destroyed. You know, Allah knows. I saw it, um, so with Nabi Yusuf alayhi salam, no matter how and no matter where they, put, they, try, they try to degrade Nabi Yusuf, someone of dignity cannot be undignified. Uh, it cannot happen. And because they have intrinsic dignity in themselves. So they could be in, they could be in the jail. They could be um, tied up you know, in, uh, in, in chains. Uh, but it doesn't matter. Uh, they are people of dignity. Imam Ashafi, uh, when he was put in the jail and they, and they chained him, even the guard could not bring himself to rough handle Imam Ashafi. Usually they, 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 they always do to, to, to prisoners. When people come, come to, the, to the jail, they push them and shove them the way guards are, in the time especially. They would, they would not handle them well. But when Imam Ashafi was brought in, they didn't know who, who he was at first. But the way he carried himself, he was wearing, you know, uh, very old clothes. Uh, but the way they carry, they had ilmu, eh? <laughs> they have knowledge, they have hadith, they have Quran, they have, you know, mashallah. The way they carry themselves, people automatically respect. <laughs> Whoever they are, they are someone special, <laughs> mashallah. Should we, we gain the respect of the guy who was, was, who was over the, the, the jail? And the guy was watching the entire time and saw that he was praying the whole night. He never stopped praying. So eventually the guy, which I'm curious, like, who are you? <laughs> it's, you know, it's, it appears to me that you're not someone normal. <laughs> who are you? And the man, he said, I'm Muhammad. My name is Muhammad. This is his name, Muhammad. This is Shafi'i. <laughs> but he didn't say his name. He said, my name is Muhammad. And then he says, you know, um, your, your full name. And then he says, Muhammad bin Idris Shafi'i. Imam Shafi'i. You. You are the Imam Shafi'i. You. SubhanAllah. I know, and then ever since then he would, he would, he would you know, um, respect him by Shafi. I, all the imams were like that. I, people, people, because they know them by their works. People know them by their works, but not by their face. So when they actually meet them, they don't know it's them. <laughs> no, mashallah. So he chose Nabi Yusuf to be close to him. Um, 
So they talked. Right? They talked. The, the, the king needed to get to know Nabi Yusuf alayhi salam. Right? But he said, the word ladayna, the king had declared, innaka liyawma ladayna. Ladayna is a close um, term to show you are right next to us. Instead of saying ma'ana or saying indana, you say ladayna. Ladayna, it shows very, very, very intimate closeness. Okay, innaka, innaka liyawma ladayna makinun ameen. The king declared Nabi Yusuf a high position of the hierarchy of his administration requiring all authorities to obey Nabi Yusuf alayhi salam. He was basically the king. And he was placed next to the king and his commandment was, it was equal to the commandment of the king. So basically he had full authority over everything in the kingdom. Mashallah. And it was how much the king trusted Nabi Yusuf that he knew Nabi Yusuf was not after kingship. Uh, to bring us so close, to give full commandment. Whatever Yusuf says is what I say. The full commandment, and mashallah, that means trust lah. He's not gonna over, he's not gonna try and overthrow the king because he has no interest in kingship, <laughs> in, in being a king. He has no interest. All he cares about is the well-being of the people. And he uses enemies along the politicians, so the king provides him with both job security and physical safety because he's right next to the king. And where who are his enemies? His enemies are the the, 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 the husbands of the woman la. <laughs> a lot of people don't like him because he's a handsome man <laughs> so got got bad name amongst the other guys who are there inshallah okay so he says so he, see there was no um, there was no acknowledgement of what the king just said he couldn't care <laughs> Nabi Yusuf alayhi salam uh, basically what he, could, what he the only thing he cared about is what he just spoke about like, make me put me over the treasures of the earth. Okay, I, that is my concern right now. <laughs> nothing else, nothing else concerns me. I have a place with you. I am trusted. I have a position. Everybody will be my command. Not my concern. <laughs> all, you know, all, all, all irrelevant to Nabi Yusuf alayhi salam. What is relevant? People are saved in the seven years of drought. Uh, that's relevant. Okay, that makes a good leader, an excellent leader, mashallah. No interest in power. At all, how many mashallah? These are people who have gone now, <laughs> mashallah. The Sahaba of Rasulullah Islam. So I always wonder how is it like to live under them? That they have no interest at all in dunya, no interest in money, no interest in power, nothing, and they are the leader of society. That's how they, they 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 lead awesome societies, mashallah. They have no interest, mashallah. قال جعلني على خزائن الأرض Inni hafizun alim. Set me over the storehouses of the land. Lo, I am a skilled custodian. Hafiz, I can guard. Alim, I have knowledge. He points out two traits. Right? So the first trait is, I am able, because he's going to show that he qualifies for the job. Uh, to show he's, quali- he's qualified for the job, first thing, he is able to save. I'm good at saving things. <laughs> I know how to save things. Secondly, I have knowledge. Okay, I have knowledge of finances. I have knowledge of, you know, of of uh, of, of of being over the stores of the earth. Right, so he mentioned two things. Eh? And because if somebody is um, has knowledge but has but is not someone who is able to save, then there's no use. And if someone is able to save and does not have knowledge, then there's no use. I must have both, and then you can be you can, you, you, are, you are fit for the job. So Nabi Yusuf, you know, amazing Nabi Yusuf, eh? he knows that he has a stable position, he's in the position to speak. So he realizes that his dream requires a lot of physical responsibility. It's already clear that a number of ministers are corrupt because they threw him into jail. <laughs> so the fact that they threw him into jail, they all cannot be trusted, eh? These people. <laughs> Right, so, so if you're going to keep seven years worth of grain in the storehouses, you need someone who cares about society. Right, if you can't just put anyone there. <laughs> they're going to squander, they're going to give their own family members, they're going to, it's all going to be corrupt. It's going to be so corrupt. Right, so so he, he knows the, the potential of corruption with regards to money. You're going to have seven years 
um, of store. I money stored store in the in the in the in the country's bank, lah. Basically, in this country is the is the bitumen, and is the bitumen or the reserves. You call it in, in our in our day, eh? is in the country's reserves. Right. So um, the one who's over it has to be responsible. He knows that his dream, though interpreted correct, uh, intercorrectly, will not be executed correctly because the first kind of corruption is fiscal corruption with regards to money, with regards to wealth. The easiest kind of corruption also lah, easiest kind. In our time already, you know, and not just not just in government positions, any like company positions, any, you know, even small companies, so easy for people to be um, dishonest, and when it comes to money, and so they say if you really want to know a person, right, see how they um, handle money. That's the first thing, and second thing is go and travel with them. And you get to know, you really get to know how people are. <laughs> you know, mashallah. Right. Um, same thing also. Like, like I know of, um, especially when it comes to religious, to, to, when it comes to religious uh, preachers or leaders, look at them with money. Because our Prophet sallallahu alaihi never showed interest in money. Right. He never showed interest in dunya at all. Not so you can't have it. People can have it if they want to. If it's halal, it's halal, right? But the way of the Prophet is not to fight over money. Uh, that's the way of the Prophet. Right? So if, um, if if it becomes clear to you that a particular religious person is dishonest with money, uh, if they are dishonest with money, it becomes clear to you, then this is actually a red, a, like a red light from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to stop following the person. Honestly, yeah? <laughs> to stop following is clear. It's clear. Once money is involved, if they show dishonesty of money, that means that they, they have no they have no tr- uh, credibility of religion. How the credibility if you're gonna dis- dis- dishonest money? On the you know on the flip side, people of religion should be able to give up give up of their money. Uh, they give up of their money. There was a story of Sayyidina Sayyidina Aizina Abidin the great grandson of Rasulullah who was in the masjid of Rasulullah in Medina, a man came up to him, mistook him for someone else. <laughs> right, basically, wrong identity. Like, mistook him for someone else. He thought that Sayyidina Ayyadina was someone that, he, that owed him money, or somebody else that owed him money. But he got the wrong guy, basically. So he came up to Sayyidina Ayyadina and he began to, to, to curse him and slander him and, 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 and uh, bad mouth him and whatsoever. I say, you, you owe me money, this amount, and you don't pay me back, and you're a liar, and you owe it. And Sayyidina Ayyadina Abidin kept quiet. He knew, obviously, he's being mistaken by someone, for someone else. <laughs> and he just kept quiet. And he said, how much? How much? And the man was like, 100,000 dirhams you owe me. You know it. And he said, okay, wait here. He went to his house, got 100,000 dirhams <laughs> in a bag, brought it out, gave the man. Here you go. And the man was like, okay. <laughs> and he went off. So the man went off. Um, the people who saw what happened, they went after the man and said, do you know who that was? <laughs> and he said, yeah, the guy owes me, owes me money. And then the, and the, the people was like, that is Sayyidina Ali Zainal Abidin, the great-grandson of the Prophet. <laughs> you got the wrong guy. And he said, I didn't know it was him. I thought it was somebody else. And he said, Allah, now I know go his money. Like he. Right, so he went back to Sayyidina Aizan Abidin and he said that, I'm so sorry. I thought you were somebody else. I didn't mean to say what I said. And I, I didn't mean to take your money either. So he can take your money back. And Sayyidina Aizan Abidin said, We, the family of Rasulullah, once we give out money, you don't take it back. Take it. <laughs> and solve your problems. They have no interest. They can give out a billion dollars. They don't care. Because that is the way of Rasulullah Wasallam. They don't care. Right, so if there's a fight between many, they'll be like, take lah. I, 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 I resolve. You know, I, I, I absolve myself of, of whatever claims. That they, I don't care. Allah will give back. Inshallah. That's why we know that it's a, a sign. It's a sign eh, of, um, subhanAllah, <laughs> it's a sign of religiosity of a person. When there was once Habib Omar, really I told the story before, was Habib Omar, mashallah, he, um, they, 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 they brought up to Habib Omar and they said that you know, the, the, the cost of the hostel is getting too expensive. Right? So we need to charge the students a bit more 
for living costs tau, for living costs. Right? And that time, they were paying per month eh, they were paying per month maybe equivalent to about $15 USD. Per month tau. For food, lodging. <laughs> You're like, what? Is there a country in the world that does that? <laughs> That's one of So they were they, paying really cheap at that time. So they, they had a meeting with Omar and they said that, okay, you know, um, we are charging really low <laughs> for this. And, and the, the, the price of oil is going up, you know, and everything is going up. Because it was a war going, was happening. You know, everything is going up. You know, we need to just increase the prices. The more the students can afford, they can afford. You know, and, um, maybe put up to 20. There was just a bit more, $3 per month. Three dollars per month is like in our country a joke, lah. Like. <laughs> I mean, like you're charging people three dollars a month for for hostel living <laughs> in NUS. You see lah, how much you charge <laughs> for hostel living? The food, lah, you see lah, how much you charge? Um, uh, then they would, and after a whole discussion, everything about you know how much just a small tree increase will help us pay the bills and everything all that. Okay, they discuss everything. Nathan to Habib Omar. So what do you say, Habib? And so first he prays Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Salaam to Rasulullah Salaam that he said Okay, we have decided That We will make the monthly Six dollars <laughs> And he said, what? They were like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> We're trying to bring it up <laughs> you, just, you just put it down <laughs> Lesser than what it was Lesser than what it was Then he said, Shaitan wants us to be Afraid Of dunya Afraid we lose dunya. Be afraid of money. Like, no. But we bring it down and we show shaitan who's in charge. <laughs> and so they, 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 they have to, we hear and we obey. Once Habib says something, you can't argue, eh? <laughs> he and, so they were like, six dollars a month, how are we going to pay our bills? Right? But, but they Habib said, Habib said, tell the whole, all the students. And those who can't pay, they have to pay. Zero dollars. That's how they, 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 they are third world country, eh? Inshallah. And then um, they did this, and within a week, right, somebody from the UK, one of his students, right, said that he had this um, um, profit in his business, so much profit that he gave about a million dollars cash to the Mustafa, to the school. So then you, you do for Allah, it will come, it will come. Allah will give you, don't worry. It will come from where you will never imagine. But it takes a lot eh, to... to, 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 to to do something completely opposite to what <laughs> to what your common sense tells you to do, like logical thinking, you to do something else, the opposite, completely opposite. You know, Subhanallah. But this is the sign of people of um, of uh, of religion, right? So and and so if if you see people, Rabbi Yusuf here, people who claim religion and yet they are calculative about money. And not rightfully calculative. It means them is wrongfully calculative. Even to be calculative rightfully also, it's a, it's not ihsan. So a lot of relinquishing of rights. Eh? <laughs> right, to walk the path of the Prophet ﷺ is the path of relinquishing your rights. That is the pra- that is the path of our Prophet ﷺ. He conquered Mecca and he gave to Abu Sufyan a few hundred camels and goats. One shot. One whole valley of animals, give, 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 give. Not a single thing help for himself. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is his way. <laughs> Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inshallah. I have, I, have, like, I have had experiences with people who are um, not as honest right, in, their, in their financial practices. Right, and then they preach the religion. And right, there was this, uh, I won't say the name, but it was this um, sheikh. Quite well known now, inshallah. Um, and they had this like summer program that a long time ago, like, about 20 years ago, summer program and, um, in this place. Lah. So um, at that time, my mother and my sister, I, they applied for the program to go for it. It was overseas. Lah. So I had to pay up front a thousand each I, to, to, to secure a position. And of course, in the statement, it says there that um, the deposit is not refundable. Okay lah, but was I mean to to to, to secure because they, they had to book the venue and everything. Understandable lah, understandable. We must book everything all that. So basically, those want to come, I you need to um, put in your deposit lah. It's not refundable, right? So okay lah. My mother, and my sister, they, they, they paid it, and then um, after the, the close to the event that was supposed to happen, almost one month before the event, no news about the event. 
So my mother emailed them, asked them, what's going on? Right? We paid for this months ago, and it's next month, and we have no news from about it. So the response to the email was, oh, the event's cancelled. No, no email, nothing. Nah. <laughs> so my mother said, okay, it cancelled. Can we have our refund? I said, oh, but the money's not refundable. Hey, not even if I can sell, not if you can sell. <laughs> Isn't that obvious? Like, I mean, there any crook can go around saying, pay me this, not refundable, that I can sell. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. But I was like, she was going to say that, no, it's, it's not refundable. I understood the, the thing to be not refundable if I can sell. Right, but if you can sell, of course refundable, lah. <laughs> of course, lah. And they said, no, it's our policy, it's not refundable, but you can direct it to any of our, our other programs. And then my mother was like, but I have no interest in your other programs. I only have interest in this one program. You can't make me buy something else. You can't, right? Uh, and, and, that, and that is correct Islamic um, mu'amala. You must go and learn fiqih mu'amala. This is what I want to do businesses, you want to run programs. Go and learn your fiqih. <laughs> First properly, so what is good for a full year? No emails back and forth, two thousand in their hands. Like, no, no, taku, no, yeah, people's money in your hands. You know, like, you hold people's money, you're like, you know, this is, this is people's money, like, but they help, they help the money, and then emails back and forth, back and forth. nothing moved, nothing moved because they were overseas. And overseas, but the the, the, the Shea is, is uh, one of the one it's one one of the more prominent ones, right, of Western Shea, like more prominent ones. So my mother went directly to the Shea on his Facebook, and messaged him, right, and then he responded the same thing, but no refund. So my mother was like like killer, huh? <laughs> Can I say I don't know. <laughs> But, but if you ever get involved with the person, I will, I will warn you not to be financially involved. Lah. <laughs> I go to people who are trusted, trusted people. I don't think they're trying to cheat. I think they just don't know the hukum. In my husband's one of them, lah, eh? my, my opinion of them, they're not trying to cheat. They just don't know um, ruling of Islam, which is actually which is wrong. If you go into this kind of thing, you're going to charge money, learn your rules. Go and learn Vicky. <laughs> I mean, it's no, it's no excuse. You're a sheikh. Can okay. um so, huh? Cannot tell. My is all recorded. <laughs> I mean, I mean, if if people, but it's a Western countries. So we're on one of the Western countries. It was like a, like a, like a retreat kind of thing. It's like it cost so much money. They deposit the one thousand because got got you know the whole lodging and everything. So then after, I think a full year passed, and then I happened. To ask my mother about the situation, and she was like, "No, they don't just ignore me not right now. They're ignoring me." And they say they keep saying, "Go and buy another one of our programs." And my mother said, "But they're they're overseas. <laughs> I, I mean, I want to go specifically for an, a retreat, you know, in this country. I don't want to go to your program just to to, to go to your country to just sit in some course, you know." So so then I then I was like, "Hey, actually, I know this uh, Shay's wife. I said to her, I know his wife." Let me just message her a bit and ask her about it. Right. So I texted her. She had no clue what was going on. Eh? Oh my God. She had no clue. I texted her, I said that this is happening, my mother, my sister, oh. and then she was like, okay, I'll check in, I'll check in for you. Right. So she checked in for um, she checked in for my mother and my sister uh, about it. And then my mother got an email from the Sheikh himself scolding her. So all ug- the ugly the ugliness began to show. Scolding her. Right for bad mouthing him to his wife, <laughs> and then and then send back the money and say take your money I don't care about it. Okay. But you <laughs> send the money back, yeah. and then after that he she messaged me on Facebook and scolded me also. I was gonna go out. scolded, but I was like I didn't I didn't respond I didn't respond to him because my I put I mean all due respect, respect. <laughs> I mean how do you that that. that that you, the way you handle money is not something that I, from then on, I stopped listening to, to him also. My mom stopped listening to him and my sister stopped listening to him. All listening to him. <laughs> huh? Yeah, it's around. <laughs> not as popular anymore. Not as popular anymore. That time he used to be popular. But now not, not as popular anymore. Huh? No, no, no. He's, he's, he's uh, um, Western. He's a Western oh. Shay. He's a Western Shay. 
Uh, but not not popular right now anymore. Ni, mashallah. Local pun ada. Local so I I've, I've come into organizations, Islamic organizations, but they charge. And there's some organizations that charge a lot, a lot of money. Um, there was one organization where I, before like, I was the sister said before I began study, I just got married. I just got married. I went to one of these classes lah, got married so time. And then um, I bought online. So when I buy online, there was an early bird discount. Okay, okay lah, I bought online. So when I went there, like, there were tickets being sold at the you know, at the desk. You, know, at, you just walk in lah. So my husband was with me. We just knew me well. He was with me. So it was an event for both men and women. So to him, you know, they just come join me lah. Uh, so I went to the desk and I said, can I buy one more ticket for my husband? So they sold me the ticket. I said, they told me how much, I paid for it. And then they sold me. So we went for the, for the event and everything. Well, what? Then the next day I got an email. They emailed me saying that the person at the desk sold me the ticket at early bird price. That's not my problem, right? <laughs> Everyone knows that, right? They don't know that. <laughs> okay. It's not my problem. Correct or not? Right, so they, said, they emailed me and they said that um, the person at the desk sold you the ticket at early bird price. This is the correct price. <laughs> they are going to pay the full price. After the whole event. <laughs> the whole event, not me. Really. They can even call me to pay the, the, the full price. Then I said, okay, as far as I know, because at the time I wasn't um, in Bulmajalas, but I, I know enough have enough common sense. <laughs> as far as I know in Islam, when it comes to transaction, what I agree to at the point of transaction is what is agreed upon. Yes. Yeah. Regardless of what's correct. Yeah. Right? That is, everybody, know, everybody knows that. Come on. <laughs> right? I mean, subhanAllah. And then I said that, so, you know, if there was a mistake that was made on your part, yeah. then maybe your pegawai, be up. Yeah. Right? <laughs> the one who sold me the ticket, she needs to bear the cost, lah. Uh, not my, not, not, not me to bear the cost. But then I said to them that I, I'm not going to be in the big issue. It's only like in ten dollars more, ten dollars more. I will speak to you all, but I'm going to tell you all first what you're doing here is not correct. Mm, I, I, had to, I had to tell lah. <laughs> what you're doing here is not correct. I, this is what is correct. But I'll pay it anyway. Okay, I don't want to make a big fuss about this, right? And then um, they responded to, to, to me. They said, please pay to this account. Money. I just pay lah. Whatever lah, pay lah. I mean, but after all that, I said to you all, nothing, nothing went, went to you. <laughs> nothing hit you. But I also wonder, like, do they not know common sense? <laughs> it's someone fake, it's common sense. Mashallah, I just don't know. Allah wa so, I cannot, cannot say like, who it was and whatsoever. But then, that time, yalah, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Right, so, it was not a time to be humble. So, when it comes to money, when it comes to money, yeah, Nabi Yusuf, right, he sh- is going to show a lot of integrity with money. Because even money can corrupt the most, the most religious of people. Uh, money comes into play, corruption. That is what happened with the uh, Khalifa of Rasulullah. So, about Khalifas, um, those that came later. Uh, so not the four, the four, the, the four who, are, who, are, who are righteous, those that came later, or even their governors. The governors came into corruption because of money. That is all money. Money destroys. <laughs> Inshallah. So Nabi Yusuf, um, he declines the offer of the king's personal secretary and instead asks the king to become the treasurer. <laughs> he has no interest to be close to the king. All he has interest about is to ensure... Things are protected and the people are served well. And that's the mark of a true leader. Right? So, it, um, so it should be accompanied with faithfulness. And it also shows that mere purity and, faith and faithfulness are not enough for accepting a social post. He must have knowledge. He must know how to do the job. And do the job well. Right? But besides them, knowledge is important. Expertise and ability are necessary too. Right? Because he has to be able, he's gonna handle the finances of the of a country. <laughs> so you can't just be a you know like someone who has taqwa. You have taqwa, yes. Then have knowledge <laughs> of how to do this. No, subhanallah. Okay, alhamdulillah. Okay, um can we stop there for the day, inshallah. Inshallah. Uh Sallallahu Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Al-Fatiha Anna Allah Ya Razukuna Al-Manafi'an 
وعملنا خازم وسلم من الهدى ويسر بي قبل نبي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم وإلى أرواح معنا من المشيخنا والزاهد الحق علينا وإلى حضرة النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم